Vaccines are underway. The vaccinations are happening right now. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, but we are still in the tunnel. As we speak, shipments of newly approved Moderna vaccine are on the way. These are live pictures, as a matter of fact, from Olive Branch, Mississippi, where the FedEx trucks are waiting to take that to different states, different hospitals. You know the first of the Pfizer allotments are in and working for tens of thousands of South Florida medical workers and also elderly residents of long-term care facilities, all most at risk of COVID's devastating effects. And at the same time, new cases and hospitalizations and deaths are on the rise. The first doctor to get the vaccine at Broward Health with Dr. Sunil Kumar, a pulmonologist. He is that hospital's chief of staff. We showed you jumping for joy at getting his shot on Wednesday. And Dr. Kumar joins us now via Skype, we believe. Dr. Kumar, are you there? Yes, you are. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Dr. Kumar, I have to say, I think you lifted everyone's spirits who saw you jump up on your chair after you got your thought. What, what was in your mind and your heart when you got the shot? Well, obviously, I was very excited. And uh, you know, I mean, me, along with uh, a lot of our healthcare heroes, they've been waiting for this moment for a long time. So I guess I couldn't hold back on my emotions. And you made for some good TV also, so thanks for that. <laughs> Dr. Kumar, there is um, so much excitement, a little bit of relief, a lot of hope, but there are also a lot of questions that people have still about the vaccines, the ones here, those to come. So a as a medical professional, hopefully you can answer some of those. And I think uh, one of the big ones is the FDA approved this for what they call emergency use. How, explain to us, how does that differ from general approval? What should the public know about that particular decision? So, so, so if, you, if, if you have to go back and look at this entire pandemic, it's a, the whole thing is a new process. So all the therapeutics that we have so far for COVID-19, everything came out as an EUA, except remdesivir, actually got approved as a therapeutic. So as we find more and more evidence that uh, this vaccine is uh, efficacious, the same as the study, they will eventually approve this as a, as a preventive vaccine. Till that time, I think we are gonna continue with this. But at the same time, I, you know, we, we, we had to be very clear about the study. I mean, science is, 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 is there, I mean, they didn't, cut any corners. I think the study was done through three different phases and the efficacy is there. So um, I won't be worried about, you know, whether it's a EUA is already approved vaccine. I think, I think it's a good vaccine. Yeah. Dr. Kumar, what is your advice to anyone who is nervous, anxious about taking this vaccine? We know that the statistics, the polling we've seen show that now a little more than 60% of Americans say, yes, they're going to take it, but to be effective, there really has to be roughly what? 70% of Americans for this to be very effective. Right, so to, to get good immunity for the whole country, we need to get up to 70 to 75%. So part of that is, uh, you know, from the beginning of this pandemic, there was, there's been a lot of misinformation. So as healthcare providers, I feel along with me and the rest of the people, I think we have a, moral obligation to make sure we convince everybody else to take the vaccine. And that part of that, that was my reasoning of taking this vaccine first. And, uh, you know, I'm continuing to talk to all my providers here in the hospital and outside the hospital so we can encourage everybody to take this vaccine. So now Broward Health and other South Florida hospitals are going to be receiving this new shipment of Moderna vaccine. Uh, also, like Pfizer is going to be a two shot process. Um, and then by January, we may have the, the third uh, one shot process. C can you lay out what the differences are in these vaccines? Because they're all targeting the same thing. And whether, you know, there have been questions that I've heard about, well, I'm going to wait for the third one or I'm going to take the first one. Is there any differences between them that, that, are, that, that matter? So between the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine, there should not be any difference. The technology is the same. I think some of the concern that people have is 
you know, we talk about mRNA vaccine. mRNA is, a, is not a new technology. mRNA technology has been studied in humans starting back in 2011. We have done many studies in cancer research using mRNA technology. Can you explain so, what that is? What is mRNA mean? <laughs> So it's a, it's a piece of the genetic information that we collected from that virus protein. So the virus has multiple proteins in it. So one of the protein is a spike protein. That's what the vaccine, I mean, the virus uses to attach to a cell and produces multiplication and everything. So this vaccine is made up that messenger RNA, which is a memory for that spike protein and we developed the vaccine out of that. So it's not, it's different than the previous vaccines because usually we use live attenuated vaccine. That means you suppress the effect of the virus and use such particles to create vaccine, or we use dead viral particles. So here actually it's even better in the sense the, the, a tiny portion of that virus, which is a spike, and we take a protein out of that and we created this vaccine. So it should have much less side effects compared to a theoretical process. And I think the effect should be pretty good. I love that science lesson. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you, doctor. Uh, doctor Kumar, l let me ask you, I think everyone understands that people like you, nurses, doctors, other people who a respiratory therapist, people who are in contact with patients suffering from COVID-19, you deserve these first vaccinations, no question. But then you get into the question of essential workers. And I just like to ask you, who are, in your view, essential workers? Are they people like cafeteria workers at your hospital or Uber drivers or bus drivers or who, who are essential workers? You know, we, we, we always keep thanking the uh, healthcare workers or the healthcare heroes, but there are a lot of heroes out there. Like you mentioned, uh, in the cafeteria workers, the, the grocery uh, stores right. out there, anybody who comes in contact with common population, and they are the reason we were able to survive outside the hospital. So I think they're all considered, they all should be considered uh, heroes, and they all should be considered this in the initial phases of this vaccine. I, I have another question going forward about the, the science of it. We've been hearing that the coronavirus is mutating. I mean, what we've been through for the past year, that's gotta be a scary thought to everyone, including medical professionals. So these vaccines that came out at literally warp speed, is that a concern to you that a, a mutation of the COVID virus going forward in a month, three months, a year, won't be something that the vaccine can fight against? Um, yes, I, I'm not that concerned, but let me explain why. So mutation of virus is inevitable. It's going to happen. If you look at the flu vaccine, right? I mean, every year we add a different strain to that vaccine because virus will mutate. But these mutations are not a significant amount. I mean, we are reporting small amounts in, in the UK, uh, Malaysia had, Philippines had. So those mutations are going to happen. Those are expected. But at the same time, I'm not really concerned about uh, that little bit of mutation and worried about and worrying about this vaccine. I, 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 think, I think we are in a good shape. I, I, I'm not worried. Uh, but at the same time, oh, I, you know, the, what this mutation put, um, what it does, or it does is, it could make this virus a little more contagious. So I think we still need to go back to, you know, our original discussions about a simple human behavioral change, right? Yeah. We all have to be in this together. We all need to continue to wear masks, social distancing, hand washing. If we all do that along with this vaccine, we can definitely get to the other end of the tunnel that's brighter. Boy, what a, what a great thought on which to end, <laughs> Dr. Sunil Kumar. We really appreciate you. your time, and may you and your staff at Broward uh, Health uh, be healthy and safe and continue your good work. And I want to just give kudos to all my Danwin intensivist physicians, the wonderful nurses and respiratory 
pharmacists, all of them together. I think we did this, and we are doing this. Thanks. Thanks so much. Cheers. We echo I had that. I had I take it off to them and you. Thank you. <laughs>